Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am going to review and react to a movie released in 2006 called Forbidden Fruits. It's about a love story between an Arabic man and a black African-American Christian woman. He's also Christian and they live in Detroit. Some of you who follow me told me that you live in Detroit and there is a very large amount of um, Arabic people in Detroit and that a lot of them uh, like the sisters, the black women and date them. I'm not shocked whatsoever, you know. Many of you know, I do think Arabic men are some of the most beautiful men in the world. Um, in America, I mean, yeah, a lot of them are attracted to black women but you don't always see the marriages all the time. So this film is gonna tackle a lot of things, you know, the whole forbidden part of it because you don't always see it. Uh, stereotypes, things that do go on um, in the community because, you know, in the black communities, there are Arabic people and the store owners, all types of stuff, and we live around each other. But this is so exciting because we get to see a real love story between two people um, of two different ethnicities. And this stars Terrell Hicks. Many of you know her from A Bronx Tale. It's a movie that is beloved by Italian Americans and African Americans. It's a story not just about the mafia, but an Italian boy falling in love with a black girl. And Terrell Hicks, this was a breakout role for her. Okay, she also, she still looks the same. Look at her right now. She still looks beautiful. She still looks youthful and she's still super talented. Okay, so I'm gonna keep everything short. Let's sit back and watch Forbidden Fruits. <laughs> All right, thanks for the ride. No problem. Hey, shoot, you're gonna go like dress like that with the do-rag, the hair tether, what are you, black now? Am I black now? Come on, man. What's the color of your skin got to do with how you dress? Come on. You still hanging out with the geniuses? Yeah, those are my boys. Okay, so it starts off with him. You know, the way he's dressing. You have one Arabic man. He's not down with dressing, as we can see, urban. He's like, are you black now? You know, and this this is real. I mean, this is how some people feel, you know. I believe that people can dress how they want, but you know, that style is influenced from black culture, but some people like that, you know, people are into different things. Okay. So this gives us an idea already, you know, the, the difference between some who are into black culture and the others who are not down with that. Hey, what's up, baby? You doing hey, all right? What's up, man? You all what right? up, babe? Where were you last night? I got worried about you. Hey, you know I got tied up, man. Man, where's that pretty black girl at, dog? What's her name? Nikki, right? Why well, can't she just be a pretty girl, man? Why else gotta mention that she's black? Dog, what is wrong with you, man? What, she ain't black? Yeah, but you ain't gotta mention that every damn time, man. Man, you know, forget all that. Wow, so we can already see. I see. He's the main character. He's like, why do you have to always mentioned that the women I date are black. You know, he says, where's the pretty black girl? He was like, she's just a woman. She's just a girl like anybody else. Me personally, um, I'm not offended if a guy I'm, I'm talking to, not black, his friend says, where's that pretty black girl you're talking to? Because, you know, it's a part, you know, of my race, I'm black, you know, and, um, but for him, obviously he wants people to see beyond the color. She's just a beautiful woman. So he's not here for it. Man, don't look. What's this? Hey, Rabs, come on. Come on, man, sit out. Yo, no. not hey, Rabs, man, it's out being girls. Man, they the same thing, man. All right, so as we can see in Dearborn, this is in Dearborn, uh, Detroit, where there is in fact a large Arabic American community we see that they're mingling with each other, the black people and the Arabs, but he says they're, they're not Arabs, they're Chaldean. And I'm not used to hearing that. I've never really heard that before, a Chaldean. And his friend said, well, what's the difference? It's still the same thing. But apparently there is some type of difference. Yeah, I bet you don't can't guess which one flew into the Twin Towers. That's me, Mark Walters, a PK, preacher's kid. Yeah, as you can see, we got money. Yo, Brian, look at this food over here, man. He banged gas from A-Rab. Let's go teach him a lesson. 
And that's Brian, my cousin from New York, who's living with us. Damn, what a bad example I turned out to be for him. Okay, so we see that he is a preacher's son, but he seems to be into the hood lifestyle. And he said it like, I'm a bad example. This is sort of, gonna, this already gives us a feel of what we're going to be um, dealing with here. Okay. And this happens a lot. A lot of uh, men in, who, who are preacher sons, they feel pressure to live up to be a certain way. They're influenced by current uh, modern day black culture, the street stuff and everything like that. What you doing over here, huh? What you doing? Rich, you know that's pop gas station across the street? What you over here for? Uh, two cents cheaper. Two cents cheaper? Brandon, you know this fool work for pop on the east side? At his other gas station? And he's up here supporting these A-Rads. You a sellout, man. Yeah, I'm gonna give you something to support. Yeah, I'm, I, I tell you what. Yeah, I got some. Say my life was heading down a path of destruction. With me beating down another black man. It does. This is ridiculous. So you're beating up a fellow black man, and you are the son of a pastor, because okay, the gas is two cents cheaper, and he's spending his money at an Arab gas station but we're supposed to be people of God. I understand about people wanting to continue money circulating in their communities, but I mean, let's just be realistic. Sometimes you're gonna get gas from a gas station no matter what race owns it. And now this preacher's son is beating up a... No, this is a mess. I can't stand those a -rabs. I live in Detroit, Michigan, better known as the Motor City, the car capital of the world. This is the city where my father, the wealthy pastor of the mega church. I guess I should give you some history of the city where there was a large migration of people who came from across the Atlantic Ocean seeking freedom. My story is about a particular group of people from the Middle East called Chaldeans, who are from Baghdad, Iraq. They believe in Jesus Christ. And the other group is known as Arab Americans who worship Islam. Somewhere around the 50s or the 60s or something like that, I don't know, large masses of these people came to Detroit seeking freedom and opportunity to work in the auto industry. Okay, so what's the issue? The Chaldeans are a separate type of Arabic group who practice Christianity. He is the son of a pastor that practices Christianity. So you both are Christians. So what's the issue? Okay, they came to America to seek freedom and they have this beef with each other. Now, I don't know how real that is in Dearborn. Okay, I'm not sure, but I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous for both groups to not like each other. You know, I think uh, prejudice and racism is, is really ridiculous. It's stu stupid and it's pointless and um, it's not of God. Okay, so a number of them came to Detroit, and this is true. Detroit in the 60s, like Los Angeles and other big cities, had an explosion by the racists, which were labor riots. I call them uprisings, expressions of years of frustration. I think back then, my mother and father used to call themselves soul brothers and sisters, and they used to say, burn, baby, burn. After the riots, many of Detroit's supermarket chains left leaving the Arabs and the Chaldeans an excellent opportunity to buy most of the supermarkets, liquor stores, gas stations, for pennies on the dollar. They became... Okay, and here we go. It's not Arabs, the Chaldeans' fault that you set your own stuff on fire. <laughs> we as black people, I don't, but you know, we'll set things on fire and destroy our own so-called communities. So another ethnic group who is not white saw an opportunity and they took it. So he doesn't like the Arabs because they took over parts of Detroit being smart business people. If it was that cheap, as he said, pennies on the dollar, then why didn't black people do it? You know what I'm saying? You lost. But he has this beef with them and anger about it. 
and wealthy entrepreneurs on the flow of black people's money. What are you doing out there in the streets acting a fool? Miss Daniels told me she saw you hit some boy in the face. Man, that was self-defense. Self-defense? Man, what do you take me for? Huh? Huh? You know, I know one thing. Listen to me. You're going to end up getting yourself locked up or worse killed out there in the streets if you don't get your life right. You gave my car keys to Brian and I'm stuck again. Who are you talking to? Cecil, do something with him. Now that's Eli, my father's flunky. I can't stand him. Always sucking up to my pops. I don't know what time we'll be there, man. It's here. I got to go. You see, he's the son of a prominent pastor. His mother is in the church and she doesn't want to see him dead. He's following the toxic part of the black community. He's trying to be a street dude. And what can people say? He comes from a two parent household, a pastor and a pastor's wife, yet he's still choosing to be the black male stereotype and live in the streets. But then again, that is the large part of the culture. He's surrounded by it. So I wonder what's gonna happen to him. Hey, Sharon. Oh, I'm sorry. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Uh, hold on. We gotta talk. Lisa, hold on. Hold on for a minute. I, I gotta get... Lisa, hold on. Mark. What you want, man? Now. We have to talk now. Look, I'm gonna get you back. Okay, bro. Hey, Lisa, let me call you back, huh? What you want, man? Look, let's set aside our differences. We're brothers, for God's sake. All this is yours, and you're blowing it. And what's the deal with these phones? Look, man. When you stop shoveling that crap you always shoveling around, then you talk to me. Otherwise, stay out of my face. Mark, believe it or not, you're the next Reverend Waters. <sighs> he doesn't want to be the next Reverend Walters. I think this is natural, though, for a lot of people that grow up in the church. They sometimes they go and they say they're they go, go crazy when they, they want freedom. They want to experience life. They don't want the pressure of trying to live up to being, you know, so perfect and good. And he's telling him, we're two black men. Like, why are you against me? You're you're a son of a pastor. You know, I'm just looking out for you. But he you can see he's stubborn. He's very stubborn about it. He doesn't want to be pulled into that life. He wants to be of the streets. Or he just wants his freedom. And he has these multiple phones, usually a sign of a player. Look, Sonny, I don't know why you called me, but I already told you, I'm not taking my bed off the table. No. That's what I mean. Maybe you should reconsider that offer we made for your supermarket. Not only am I not going to sell my uh, supermarket. I'm also going to acquire several more, I believe. What kind of car are you driving again? Look, Sonny, you already own, what, over 10 supermarkets and five liquor stores? It should be enough. <laughs> it is never in a full stores. You should know that. Okay, so as we can see, he owns a supermarket, which I do applaud a black man who owns a supermarket. He's just not a pastor. And uh, this Chaldean, um, even though they don't like to be called Arab, I mean, they're just a different kind of Arab but he owns several supermarkets and liquor stores but i guess he's interested in his and he's like why isn't that enough but you have to understand when it comes to power and building it's never enough most men uh who who are building they want complete domination and business and to to have it all i mean you really can't be mad at it but it's competition he's in competition that's you know that's what men do who are trying to really uh, build up things. Okay, he said, it's never enough. What's going on? We may have some trouble with Reverend Walter. What's going on, Sam? Sonny Bowden, he already owns what? 10 supermarkets and five liquor stores. And now he's trying to help hit me on the sable lot that I'm bidding on. Pop, you know you can't trust those air people. First of all, Sonny's Chaldean. And? Chaldeans, Arabs, whatever. They all are saying to me, they all live in the sand, right? Listen, son. Uh, grab the uh, M on the encyclopedia. <sighs> well, he doesn't care for the Chaldeans, the Arabs, but he's explaining to him, 
you know, they are Christian Arabic people. I mean, just like in the in the Christianity in America, you have the Baptist, you have the Mormon, you have the Pentecostal, okay? You have the seven day evangelist and stuff. The uh, <laughs> what was Michael Jackson? Uh, Jehovah's Witness. I mean, there are different sectors even within religions, and um, you know, he says don't trust the Arabs. I mean, it's just business. I can see if he tries to do something sneaky, but he's trying to outbid him for the supermarket. I mean, it's business. You see, son, now this is a map of the Middle East. Now this is northern Iraq, where the Chaldean people come from. Okay. This is Lebanon, where the Arabs come from. <laughs> okay. Two very distinct places, very different in many, many ways, most ways. That is northern Iraq where the Christian Chaldean people came from. And that is Lebanon where many Muslim Arabics live. Just to clarify things. Listen, Papa, if I want to hear a school lesson, I'd have been in school with Brian. Can I get out of here, please? You know, and this is eye this is eye opening because you don't hear about that. When people think Arab, they just think Arab. They don't think about the differences between the groups. I mean, there are some places where you like Dubai. You don't have to wear the hijab. And then there are some places, maybe like Afghanistan or Yemen, where you have to wear it. I mean, it's, it's differences, okay? So this is definitely educational. And I got a feeling this guy, his heart might be changed. We shall see. There you go. So how you like it? I love it. Girl, are you sure you want to be a lawyer? You know you got it going on when it comes to doing some hair. You sure you want to be a lawyer? <laughs> Girl, those summers in New York are getting to you. You sound like a New Yorker yourself. I know. Okay, so look. What's up? Let me ask you something, and I don't want you to get mad, okay? But I was looking around in your room the other day, and I couldn't help but notice a name and a number. Somebody named A. Muhammad. I didn't know you was dating somebody. You are so nosy. I can't believe you was going through my stuff. Dang, aren't we a little touchy? You been going through my stuff too. Don't even front. <sighs> Who is he? All right, all right, all right, all right. What do you think about dating an Arab? He ain't one of them terrorists, is he? Come on, Lisa, stop playing. <laughs> okay, so we already see the beautiful Terrell Hicks. First of all, I don't want anybody going through my stuff. Don't go through my phone numbers and all of that. Okay, but she shares with her, yes, he is an Arab. Okay, and she's like, is he a terrorist? Listen, it is not uncommon to hear stuff like that. I've heard it when I've said I think Arabic men are very attractive. I mean, not every single one I see, but I've seen some very attractive, handsome Arabic men. And people, I've even seen it in, in my chats where you assume, is he going to beat you? Is he going to force you to wear the hijab? Is he dangerous? Oh, I just can't. You know, I've, I've known uh, Arabic people who weren't the stereotype whatsoever, just regular people. Of course, you know, they do their prayers and stuff. But again, not everybody is the same. But unfortunately, a lot of Arabic men have that stereotype against them of being, you know, oppressive and stuff. But, um, you know, this is bound to happen. This is Dearborn. OK, so many Arabic guys, so many black girls. Ugh. It's bound for the mixing to happen, you know, at least probably nowadays, because there is a lot of attraction. Unfortunately, as you can see with this title, they're always trying to make things so forbidden. Okay? And it's ridiculous. Wait, I'm just playing. Look, as long as he got some money, I don't care if he's Chinese, Japanese, Blackanese. Shit, he could be the Unabomber. I don't care. You are crazy. <laughs> Will you hand me my phone, please? Ooh, who's Brian? Give me my phone. Glory, give me my phone. Aren't you a little touchy? Anyways, like I said, who's Brian? Nobody. Oh, come on. If I tell you, you promise you won't start tripping. Crystal, just tell me. It's Brian Casey. Wait a minute. Nicole's cousin? Yeah. But he's black. He's an Abed. Shh. Mm. So as we
we can see, it's not just a, a black girl and an Arab guy having a relationship. We also have the Chaldean, um, Arabic, Chaldean uh, girl with a black guy. And um, she says, but he's black, you know, he's an abbot. I've never heard that word abbot before, but apparently it's probably like the N word. Um, but again, it's not really something you see a lot, especially if he's like the stereotypical black guy, the bad reputation of not marrying, not taking care of their children. Um, that's just a part of it as to why I'm sure some of the parents are like, no, we do not want to see this. But it's also, uh, you know, old racism and stuff like that, a mixture of everything. But um, she has her black man. And apparently this is on the low, I guess. Gloria, keep your voice down. Gloria, I care about him a lot. I'm starting to fall for him. Are you crazy? Your brother will kill you, literally. I know. That's why you have to promise me you can't say anything to anybody. Please, Gloria. Yeah, whatever. I won't tell anybody, but people will see you. Gloria, where are you going? Gloria! Crystal, you know, Gloria may have a point. Don't listen to them. If I was you, I wouldn't worry about it. I can already predict that her friend is going to be a problem. She is not down for the swirl. Did anybody see my bag? Raheem, where do you think you're going with that, your sister? Come on, Ba. You know I got the early class this morning. Now that's A. Mohammed. He's one of those Muslims from Dearborn. Besides, I thought Marcia's taking her to school today. I mean, I gotta go. Brahim, come back and wait for your sister. I don't want her to go with that girl. Come on, I promise. Tomorrow I'll take her to school. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, I promise. But I gotta go. First of all, I don't even have to say it. He is, he is gorgeous. He is gorgeous, okay? Also earlier with his uh, Chaldean associate friend or whatever saying, oh, you, look how you dress, you're trying to look black. I will say I don't embrace the hood life, the, 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 the hood rat lifestyle and stuff. You know, up over here, we do not like to date those type of men. But he doesn't seem like that type, you know? He seems like a regular guy, but his style of dressing is more urban. Of course, you know, he, he probably will grow out of that. But um, yeah, so he doesn't, you don't see him wearing the head coverings and stuff like that. So he's definitely Americanized. Thank you. Wait a minute, I thought Abe was supposed to drive you to school today. I already told you that Marcia was going to pick me up today. I don't like that Mexican girl, Amina. I think she's a bad influence on you. She seems a little too wide. No, she's not like that. Okay, okay. So, so as we can see, her mother, her Chaldean Arab mother, she doesn't even want her hanging out with Mexican girls. She says, oh, she's probably too wild. So it's not just an issue with mingling with the black people, but also other type of ethnicities and cultures, period. Hey, what's going on? I don't think your mother likes me much, huh? No, that's not true. Why do you say that? Well, you never invited me over. I'm sorry. It's all good. You know you're my girl. We're out. That's a sign. That's a sign right there. You know, if you are friends with uh, people of different cultures, if they never, if y'all are so close, but they never invite you to the house, that's a sign right there that maybe they're trying to hide you from their family, even though it's not like you're dating or something, but usually close friends, the family might know about you and stuff. And um, that can be an issue, you know? Then again, you know, if you're my friend, you're still gonna be my friend, we'll always be friends, but it's a shame, you know, if the family is uncomfortable with you coming around just because you're of a different culture and, and, and race and all that stuff. And I don't know why we're sitting around for you to change your clothes anyway. Look, I'm Muslim. It's more than my culture, it's my religion. And if I get caught by my brother or my father in these clothes, I'm dead. Come on, we're gonna do it. Where is- 
Okay, so as we can see, she she changed. She changed into more, uh, not ex a little bit more revealing clothing. You know, again, you know, people when they are kind of forced to adhere to religious beliefs or uh, cultural practices and stuff when they're young, some of them want to break free from that. So she's sneaking. Who knows what she's doing, you know, when she's outside of the house or whatever. But she says, you know, if my brother and father and them catch me like this, it's going to be a problem. And that is probably true for a lot. Hey, what's up, man? You all right? Was that Abe we just saw? Oh, girl, he is cute. Why don't you hook me up with one of his boys? Yeah, that was him, girl. Now, you know your brother Mark is going to have a fit when he finds out you're dating a Chaldean guy. First of all, he's not Chaldean. He's Lebanese. <laughs> Come on, Nicole. What's the difference? There is a difference. Mark what? doesn't care. All Arabs look alike to him. First of all, Mark ain't my daddy. And I can see whoever I want to. I got that. Oh, you got that? Mm-hmm. You sure? Positive. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes, girl. You know, listen... When you want someone, you want them. You know, if a guy is of a, diff a different race or culture, I'm, me personally, <laughs> nobody is going to tell me I can't like him. No matter what they say, the attraction is not going to go away. You know, and she has it bad for him and he has it bad for her. They're like young and in love. And even when you get older, when you meet the, the right one and they're even a different race or culture than you, I mean, you, you feel so happy. You don't care about what other people think. Sometimes you do, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should be with the person that you want to be with and who you're attracted to. And she's like, he's not what you say. He's Lebanese. There's a difference. Okay. But, um, you know, to some people, they're like, we don't care. They're all Arab to us still, you know, please stop hating. But her friends seem to be still a little bit supportive. But she is all like all in love and giggly over him. And you can see it in his eyes. He's all about her. Whatever. Look at him. He just fine. Go get it, girl. You know you got this. Go get it. Whatever. <laughs> Come on Come now. On, no. I gotta get to gym class. Forget gym class. Look, we don't want anybody to see us all black and an A-Rab together. Oh, Come, on. Come on. That look crazy to them. Come on, baby. Who cares who sees us? Look, why you fighting them? Come on, baby. What do you mean? All right. How come I haven't been to your house yet? Mm. You know what? You better go to gym class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like I figured. Wait a minute. My boys are right there. I think you better go on first. <laughs> yeah, go first? So they can't see a Muslim and Christian together? So just go, Nikki. You got a volleyball game to play. So just... I'll be ten seconds after you. You know, you're the boss here, you know. Mm. I couldn't resist. My God, this is real, especially when you're in high school. But even when you're an adult and maybe you're new to, to interracially dating, you got to let go of caring about other people's opinions because at the end of the day, it's your life. And they are both totally into each other. But she did ask a real question. You know, you're into me. You like me. When am I coming over to meet your parents? You know, he's, you know, go in front of me type of thing because it would... I, this is not always common, and at least in the film and sometimes in real life. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't for some people. But, you know, you have to overcome all of that. He has to claim her. He has to claim her. You know, that's how I feel. If you, if you want to be with me, you have to claim me. You can't care. You're a man. Be a man. Don't care about uh, what other people think. But, you know, she says, you know, a Muslim guy, a Christian woman. You have the interfaith thing. But at the end of the day, we all still believe in God and our faith actually is very similar, very similar. And I believe love overcomes all and things could work out point blank period. So, but anyway, let's continue. Beautiful. No way. Hey, chill out, man. Hey, man, I need to kick with you on some real stuff for real, B. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to break it to you, but you need to let your girl go as soon as possible, man, for real. Why? Because some stuff you don't really know about her, man. You know, a couple years back, 
It was a dude named Curtis, right? Same situation you in. Decided to kick with one of them Chaldean girls, right? One day he goes to pick her up from work. Work was work. Work was work. Good. I missed you there today. What's wrong? Somebody bust all my tires and blew all my windows out last night. These, this is real. And unfortunately, you still have things like this that happen sometime. But see, we have, this is on both ends, the, the Chaldean Arabs and the black people who, who are trying to make their friends involved with people of different cultures resist it. They might not want to see them get hurt or they don't want to have to deal with the cultural clashes if the, the men are possessive of the women uh the you know vice versa and all of this but you know times are changing especially here in america i can definitely say but let's see what happened and wrote on the side of my damn car nigga leave her alone there they go right there talk about a whole gang of them cats rushed this car man snatched him and his girl out <laughs> Get everything out of that truck, man. I don't want nothing to be traced back to me. After that, toss both of them in the Detroit River, man. Let's just set an example for the rest of the island. No worries, man. Just another nigga. Come on, let's go. Nobody heard about him or her since, man. And you know who I saw? That guy um, in the beginning who, um, the guy who wanted to buy the supermarket, the younger guy, um, that was him who killed the the Chaldean girl and the black guy. So his black friend is trying to say, listen, I don't want to see you end up getting killed because, you know, the, the, the Chaldean Arabic guys are very possessive of their women and they will kill you. And there is truth to that. I mean, I did hear about a lot of um, Arab girls in England are dating black men like that's more common and they say in the Islamic faith there was a guy named Bilal who was black who was a major part of uh, Islam building the faith and all that stuff and was very loved and he was black so a lot of them will say that like how can you be racist and one of our founders of the religion was Bilal I think that was his name I ain't trying to see that happen to you be for real Ain't nobody throwing me in the river, man. I'm stuck in the Zimmerdale. But I told you to put the 40 ounces in the beginning of the cooler. So when the customer's coming in, they'll see them right away. Oh. All right. Let's tighten it up. I'll see what you know. Take me two seconds. Look, look, I'll call you right back in a minute. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. What's your name? Cookie. Cookie, I'm Sammy. You got a man? No. Why don't you give me your number? This shit all again. Always trying to hook up with somebody. Man, let's go. Hurry your ass up. Shut up, man. And this is ridiculous. You need your ass whooped. No, he need his ass whooped. Man, shut up. Those little ass girls, man. Man, don't hate that. 15 man. years old. What? I can't even look at y'all down, but without y'all having a fit. I'm telling y'all all the time to have sex without women. And we can't even look at y'all. Why did you shut the... Now, I don't have an issue if he likes black women. I mean, she's beautiful. He thinks she's pretty. The issue is she is like obviously underage. And I mean, this happens, but this happens with black, this happens with all races of pedophiles. I mean, what 80% of uh, black girls before they turn 18 have experienced some type of molestation or uh, black girls get molested by black guys. And um, in some cases you might have this happen. Uh, this is not the case for every hood area where the gas store owners are not black. Um, but yeah, if they see a pretty black woman, they will try to talk to you if, if they're interested. You have to vet all men because some men do of any race, including your own, just want to sleep with you and won't marry you. And some of them will. Everyone's different. But he said, um, you know, some of you are dealing with black women, but if we try to deal with your women you know, they'll throw a fit. I'm sure that does happen sometimes, but, um, you know, I could say a lot more, you know, I can go in, but we gotta, we gotta keep this movie going in. 
we have to keep it going all right so um here let's continue i love you get out of my stuff Oh, go to hell, man. This ain't your damn yes, stuff. All right, all right, man. Man. What's the problem, man? Hey, Sammy man. won't give you credit on a no, bottle of Remy or something, man? It ain't the damn Remy case. Hey, Sam, give me a pint of Remy, man. You got it, boss. I said Remy. Oh, I'm sorry. Put it in a bag, too. Here you go, boss. Come on, man. Let me talk to you. You think I should give him my number so he can hook me up with one of his boys? Girl, please, you're only 15. And you only 16. Okay. <sighs> Too young to be talking to grown men of any race. But this is what happens when you have a community that's completely dysfunctional. Okay? We all know that grown black men are sleeping with girls that young too. That's a problem, period. But what you're also seeing displayed here is power. Look very closely. This is power, okay? This is power, what you're seeing. Let's just, let's just continue. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Those are kids, man. Little ass girls. What I want? What you think I damn want? I want you to hit on me like you hit on them. Well, bend over. Pete, she probably wants a job or something, man. You sure she want a job? Or Sammy want a job? A blow job? Forget what Sammy wants and think of what you want. Pine of Remy. Take it and just pay me on Friday when you get paid. Take it. Just because I'm taking this liquor. Don't mean you buy me. We still want you to show actually he is buying you you just submitted you as a black man just submitted you try to stand up for your little sisters right you want them to be shown respect now here's the thing oh don't be a hater if we do date arabic men as grown women we have a choice we can do that the same way black guys are interracially dating all over the place in america and england and everywhere else the thing is is that he was upset about it he seemed actually upset because they're underage he gives him the liquor he says don't think you're buying me you took the liquor he did just buy you you're being quiet you're submitting to him this is what power looks like. They run the stores because they didn't do it when it was cheap to be able to do it. We see it right now that the these the black men are not buying up and starting bodegas and, and these type of stores. You know, it's business and it's competition amongst every racial group who wants power and build to build and stuff. But he's displaying his authority and his power over him. We still want you to show our women the same respect as you show y'all. Respect goes both ways, man. Come on. Will you get your big ass out my way? Now look at this. I just said what you see is a display of power with the men not black over the black men. And look right there. He has a black guy, a big old black guy as the security. Okay. And he was a part of the group that attacked the black man who was dating a Chaldean girl. But he hired the black man in the store. He's like he's like the slave, the big, as they say, buck, the big buck that protects the store and is willing to go upside the head of his fellow black man to protect them. Well, can you be mad at the, the Chaldean Arabs or would you be mad at the black man who has lowered himself to this? Also, I want to touch on something too. I mean, that's, that was a real scene though, because um, I when I was a teenage girl, I had a number of guys who are not black in establishments who, who hit on me, who asked me for my number and all that. And I was clearly underage one thing you also have to remember is that in other countries and cultures um it's accepted and it's normal for older men to be with younger girls in america that is not seen as right at large it's not really supported you will go to jail in america for that but it's common in many countries including in africa but yes it is true i mean but I didn't see them just hitting on random girls. I mean, they have to be attracted to you, but they don't always care that you're not of legal age. 
but that does exist as well. But look at this. I mean, he bought him with the, with the liquor. He did. And then his fellow black man who's protecting the store is ready to go upside its head. And he didn't even do anything to him, but he is the slave of the store. What's up, man? Man, you know what's up, man. You tired of all these freaking Chaldeans, man, buying up every damn thing on the block and running through our women like they hoes or something. Yeah, I can tell you, man. But they make the rules right now. That's bullshit, man. How you gonna make the rules on who I see or who somebody else sees because he got money? Man, stop thinking with your small head and thinking with your big head, okay? Don't mess with they women. Man, it, it ain't even about that, man. It ain't about a piece of ass, Jay. Man, it's about two people that care for one another, you know, that are from two different races, man. Man, she was digging me and I was digging her. What's wrong with that? Sammy got... Now, I agree. You know, people should be allowed to love who they love of any gender, any race. But look at how he submitted the big buff guy, the, the slave of the store. He said, basically, he's telling him, we submit to them. This is how it is. They have the power. They have the money. And they keep complaining about them buying up everything. Well, black men, then start to get your stuff together so that you can buy up stuff. And it's not like the opportunity was never there in history for this to happen. You know, if you're not going to move like the other men, get together, work together, put your money together, then you're going to lose in the competition in business and money. And the man with the money typically does rule. That's just all over the globe. People with money have more power. They have more options. They have more authority. And they're more respected by a number of people. But, you know, he does all that beating up on fellow black men, but he submits to them. He says, okay, yeah, but I'm not going to dare touch um, one of their women. I know my place. It's different, but this is what shows you too. Like, look, like I said, there are black women like myself. Yes, we are attracted to Arabic men. But when you watch this, you also see what happens when you don't, you don't have a functioning community where you're the head and the leader. Your women are unprotected. Like I said, yes, there are a number of us as quiet as is kept. Yes, we are attracted to handsome Arabic men in America and outside of America, but a lot, you know, we see in America, it, it's, it, we don't talk about it a lot, but trust me, we do. Especially some of the women who, who told me this that live in Dearborn, uh, Michigan. And But the thing is, they're upset about them being able to have access to the black woman, the beautiful black woman, but they feel that they're being deprived from the same access to their women. And it's showing you the difference in power, you know? They have more options and they can do it more. It's not always about race. It's about the man who is who has the power, has the choices. You know, they're powerless. So they don't have as many choices as them to maybe flex and do what they want, see who they want. And of course, the cultural issue. But this also shows you, you know, the lack of protection that they have over their own women and it's not because someone's stopping them from doing it. No one's stopping them, be very clear. You know, like I said, these things come from within. But also, I don't believe, um, especially in 2022, I mean, you're not going to uh, tell people who they can love and stuff like that. But these are real issues. Man, she was digging me and I was digging her. What's wrong with that? Sammy got five different kids by five different babies' mamas and don't take care of none of them. And is it a coincidence that they are black? I don't think so. And you supporting them, man. Man, I don't support them. This is what I do for a living. This is all I can do. I'm good at this. You running behind them, yes, master, and them, you know, for this little chance. Hey! I love you, man. I hear what you're saying, man. But they make the law. They got the money. They got the power. How is it right to you what you did to me at the pool park? For them. I said it before he even said it. I just said what he said, but he completely um, submit. And I have to say, I am disgusted by any man of any culture, including black, but, you know, making the black woman a baby mama 
if you're going to deal with us and thank God, a lot of us are knowing our worth so much more. If you're not a black guy, you know, there are some black women who, who take the, the bad mentality with them, no matter where they go and settle for that type of stuff. But no, a number of us, we do not want to be, um, treated like, like crap. OK, he said that he has five baby mamas who are all black women, but he doesn't take care of any of them. That is the same thing that we see in the black community. And that type of stuff has to stop. And I mean, he he doesn't value those women. He's just sleeping with them and making the babies. And I don't respect that. Put him on child support, point blank and period. Take care of those kids. OK, now I understand, again, if a man has multiple women and you have polygamy, which is permitted in that religion, that's a different story. But no, these guys are born here in America, okay? Live in America and are practicing ratchet behavior that is, well, they're not Islamic. That's what you have to remember too. They're Christian. They're, even though they're Arabic or, or um, Muslim, but they're Muslim Christians. And that's anti-Christianity, what he did, okay? Ratchet behavior. And again, the guy just submits. He Let's see what he did to him. Because he's very upset and angry, saying that you are protecting them like a slave, knowing your place. He says they got the money and the power. You see, you can't respect the black man who submits like that. But at least he's being honest, too. That is reality. his reality. OK, but, you know, it's still horrible. And he says, look at what you did to me, your fellow black man. Well, let's see what he did. You know, if case come up in here, I'm going to lose my job. Probably my life if you say James on me. Don't say the name case. Mm. Right. Mm. All right. Mm. Oh, hell no. What the hell are you doing, man? I thought I told you this man. Get your ass over here. What are you doing? What did I tell you? Jay. You already had your chance, Jay. right? Jay, come on, man. Come on, man. Let me go, man. I'm going to let you go. Go! 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 How was it right to you? He is their slave. He's their modern day slave. And there will be people that will be mad at the Arab, but if anything, the Chaldean group, but if anything, I mean, they're not forcing him to do that. He could go out and try to get a regular job or, or do something with his life. No, he is cho he has chosen to be the slave, the security guard slash slave and um, beating up black men who, who date women of their culture. And again, he already confessed to submitting. You, Paul, Sonny, sit down. Why are you looking at me like that for? Case, you can't continue to strong arm people for them to sell you their businesses. The most powerful people in this state today are Jewish. And I've been getting a lot of phone calls from them because of you. Wait a minute, sit down. The most powerful men in Detroit happens to be black. And we do a lot of business with black people. They are my largest consumer. Quiet, I'm not finished talking yet. We're not Arabs. We're Chaldeans. We're not Muslims. We're Christians. Uncle Sonny, I know what we are. Case, we do not practice Islam. So that means we are like Americans. And we cannot be alienated by them because of your stupidity. Okay, so it's being cleared up again. He's saying we are not, it can, it can get confusing, right? You know, you think, okay, are you Arabic? Are you Muslim? But they're saying, no, we're Chaldeans. Even though they probably are share the same genes and stuff as people from surrounding areas and stuff, they they have separated themselves saying we are american we are christian you can't go around strong arming people the largest biggest people of influence and power in detroit or dearborn are, are black and we do business with them you're you are 
this is not acceptable. So um, he seems like a, a, an okay guy and stuff, but um, it reminds me of the pastor's son too, right? He's being hard headed. He wants to be a gangster, even though he's the son of the pastor. And now you have him. He's a young Chaldean guy, but um, he wants to be racist and everything and not be a Christian, like, you know, accepting different faiths and other people of different faiths and cultures accept other people too. But you get what I'm saying? He is a bad look. And he's like, we're not here for it. You, we do business with black people. You are being a racist. You are strong arming people. You are making us look bad. And we are Christian American people. What he's saying case, we came here with almost nothing and we worked very hard to get the thing we have achieved. We want to keep our good traditions for hard working people. And it just dawned on me, why should I even waste my goddamn time with you old outdated fogies? I know what the hell I'm doing. Come on, Ale, get up, get up, dance for us. Oh, I don't want to. Come on, Abibi, let us see you no, dance. No. All right, all right, I know you can't dance. So where's Abe? I don't know. He's becoming more and more Americanized, putting the family last. I don't understand these kids nowadays, forgetting their culture, not knowing where they come from, listening to this hip-hop junk, dressing like Eminem, talking like Jay-Z, and dancing like Usher. <laughs> wow, Uncle Omar. How do you know so much about hip-hop? I may not approve of it, but I do know a little bit about it. My Nizi for cheesy. <laughs> Nizi for Zizzy? What's that? <laughs> Oh my God. So, I mean, you do have this again where people come to the country and I mean, hip hop culture dominates American culture. It is the most popular type of culture and music and, and stuff like that in this country. Now, there are a lot of people who still hold on to their culture and they don't, I mean, a lot of what we see is very toxic and they don't, if they adopt a lot of the tox toxic part of the black community, um, influenced by a lot of hip hop, it would destroy their community. That is the truth. Okay. You, you will see out of wedlock kids everywhere, sagging pants everywhere, disrespecting women everywhere, c calling yourself all types of stuff. Okay. Violence, gun violence. Okay. I mean, is it a coincidence that hip hop rappers are the largest group? Who, who shoot each other. You don't see men in country music and rock and roll music and jazz music always shooting each other. You see this in hip hop, okay? And people can get offended all you want, but there is a little bit of truth to that. But I personally think that that guy is probably a racist. I mean, he just, I understand you don't, you wanna hold on to your culture and that's fine and who you are, but um, there's a little bit of some ignorance with him because remember we as black people, we are not all the same. Always remember that we are not all the same. Okay, a number of us call out the toxic part of um, the so-called community and everything like that. So let's continue. I'm glad you could finally make it. I'm sorry. Hey, Uncle Omar. How are you? Hey, Auntie. Hey, everybody. Your Uncle Ahab is getting married in Beirut, and I would like you and your sister to come and join us in the festivities. Maybe Abe, while we're there, we'll find your bride and bring her back with us. Yes, that would be a wonderful idea, Omar. That'd be wonderful for you to find a wife. Yes, it's time, son. You have had your share of different women. It's time you settled down and found yourself a nice Muslim girl. Yeah, you know, I'd really love to go with you, but I have school. I can't go either. <laughs> Look at this, though. They say that they are Americanized, Americanized Christians, Chaldeans. But see, this is where the line between culture and religion kind of clash because in America, we don't do forced marriages to people. We, we choose who we love usually. Sometimes it's disastrous, but at least we have the freedom to, to date someone and get to know someone and then marry, you know, they're talking about sending him to Beirut to find a wife and all this other stuff. And, you know, he's, he, he's like, 
I probably want to pick my wife, you know, and they don't know. They don't know he's seeing a black girl. You know, that's the love in his life right now, you know, but this is real. Those pressures. He's a young, he's a young man. I don't, he's not even out of high school yet. And they're talking about, um, sending him off there to, to um, find a wife, you know, and these are real issues and it, it, it can be very problematic sometimes when people, they don't want to be forced to, um, to get married so young all the time and they don't have their, their stuff together, their life. And, you know, they, they are pretty Americanized and stuff. So this is a real thing. Hey, what's up, Nick? What you doing? Nothing much. Just studying. That's your problem. You study too much. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Case. What are you doing? Oh, studying. Yeah, you study a little too much. Look, I got a lot of tests coming up, and I've got to keep getting those A's for Mommy and Daddy. Yeah, well, I have a lot of tests coming up. Why do you think I've been hitting the books a lot lately? Plus, you know, I have to keep those A's for Mommy and Daddy. <laughs> you should hear how you sound when you say Mommy and Daddy. What? It reminded me of when you was a little girl, and I used to pull your pigtails and jump on the elevator and go on the third floor and, and hide around this big see as you can see we're not very different you know they're going through the same thing you know you want to live your life you want to do well you know you want to make your parents happy and stuff you know most humans are the same we go through the same thing there are some differences sometimes but in the end we're not that different <laughs> Ooh, those were good memories you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me when you were about 12 years old, running around in the basement, me chasing you, trying to pull on your pigtails. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that. Those were the days. Yeah, they were the days. And now I'm hanging around with T. Can you believe that? Nowadays, I hang out with Big Bad Jay. I don't know what you hang out with Terrence for. What the hell are you hang out with him for, Case? He is such a wannabe player. Nicole. What? Let me tell you something. You know, I'm hanging out with him because he's black and it pisses dad off. Because I know it pisses off Pop. That's why I'm hanging around with you. Mark, you know you need to stop starting trouble with Pop. You know what your problem is? You need to find some spare time for a big brother to take out a little sister to the movies. Because, you know, I miss my little sister. You see, again, not very different. You have the pastor's son who says, I'm hanging out with a pimp or gangster or something, drug dealer, because I know it upsets dad. And then you have him, the Chaldean guy, I'm hanging out with the black guys because I know it pisses dad off. Oh, but see, I told you they were similar. Uh, okay, come here. When you get some time, let's hang out like we used to go to a movie or something like that, all right? I miss you too. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. All right. Hey, did you know your cousin Brian was dating some Kale Dean girl? B? B. B got a Kale Dean? Mm -hmm. uh, word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let me let me ask you something. Why is it that you can date black, white, Puerto Rican, but if I brought home someone who wasn't Chaldean, you? would kill me that's different i'm a man plus i don't make the rules you know our chaldean women should stick to our kind it's cool to see a brother tap that for a change because they always run up in our women did you ever think that brian and this girl they could actually be in love <sighs> okay first of all we see it how men are I can do it, but you can't. It's different. It's not different. Love is love, you know? And that same guy that's beating up uh, black guys for dating Chaldean women, his sister said, look, I've seen you. You date black girls. You date Puerto Rican girls. You date white girls. You date all races of women. But he thinks, oh, it's so different. It's different. This is the thing, you know, the, the misogyny, the men wanting full control over the women's love lives, but they get to go out there and you know, who are around with whoever they want to and be racist and stuff. You know, women deserve love with who they want to love as well. <laughs> Nicole, what love got to do with this? But what does love got to do with it, Crystal? You know, I'm cool with whatever. Hey. What's up? 
as long as it's not you, dating or kill, Dan, Arab, or whatever they want to call themselves these days. As long as it ain't you dating out of our race, especially Ahmed, I'm cool with it. Look at look at how butthurt they are at the thought of their sisters falling in love with an Arab and falling in love with a black man. You know, this is so real. Thankfully, I you know I don't I have a, a brother and he he wouldn't he wouldn't care if I dated an Arabic Chaldean Muslim or whatever or any race. You know? I think I like this type of food. What is it called again? Galaba. <laughs> Go who? Galaba. Whatever. All I know is it's good. I feel like I'm in Lebanon or something. So are you gonna give me a tour around here? Well, first of all, there's more than just Lebanese people here in Dearborn. There's Arabs from all over the Middle East. There's Saudi Arabians, Iraqis, Yemenis. Show my pillow myself. What is Fiello? Palestinian. Do you know Dearborn has more Arabs in this city than any other city outside the Middle East? No, I heard that before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? First of all, the food looks delicious. Now, I've never really had f Arabic food that much, but I like a lot of food from India. You know, the spices, the potatoes, the sauces. Okay. Now, of course, you're not going to have any pork. Okay. I mean, I don't know if they eat pork, though, since they're um, Christian. So maybe they eat pork. But then the culture, they pr they probably don't eat pork. But I would love to try some Arabic food. I'm sure it's probably good. Full of flavor and spices. And I did not know that Dearborn has the largest uh, community of Arab Americans. True. Let's go on that mini tour. That would be nice. But first, I gotta finish my galava bowl. Gal galava. Gal oh man, whatever. you're crazy. Yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> this food is really good. This is a beautiful church. It's called a mosque. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's under construction. When do you think it'll be finished? Been under construction for a while. Should be done in a few months. Okay. How often do you worship? <laughs> Not often enough. I'll tell you one thing: if me and you got married, you'd convert, and we both would worship here. Are you asking me to marry you? Oh, wait a minute. Oh boy, relax. So tell me, how far do you live from here? Not too far. You know what? Let's go to my house. Are you asking little old me to come to your house? Oh my god. I'm flattered. Oh, come on. Actually, I'm speechless. Let's just go. Come on. Did you get in a car already? Let's go. No, girl. One thing I can tell you, do not go to the house. Okay? Any guy you're seeing, period, you don't go to their house, but especially a guy who isn't black of another culture, they're different. They're culture. Do not go to his house. Not when you're first dating. I know he's American. He's Americanized, but still, he still has, I'm sure, some of those, the cultural ways and stuff. Girl, do not go to his house. Do not. Okay? When a guy wants you to come over his house and you're highly attracted to each other, you know something's probably going to happen. Usually. Sometimes it doesn't, but you don't want to rush into that. Mm. This is beautiful. Yeah. Where is it? That's Lebanon. Uh -huh. My family's all there right now for my uncle's wedding. Yeah. So, we're here alone? Yeah. Were you afraid to be alone with me or something? Mm-hmm. Were you afraid I might bite you or something? Yeah. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> you silly. Like I said, don't go to the house. Okay, she is, I believe, a virgin. Okay, she she's the daughter of a pastor, a Christian pastor. Okay, 
So, hmm. I'm not sure about this, baby. What are you not sure, about, baby? Well, I want someone who loves me. I think I do love you. You think you do? Mm, correction, I do love you. Mm, I think you'll say anything to get some right now. he loves her now i think he does have love for her but you know when a guy wants you he of course he's going to tell you that he loves you they'll say anything in that moment i'm sorry i can't do this i always said i wanted to save myself for my husband i mean What's the difference? It's like I'm your husband. You know I'm going to marry you. We're not married yet. But you know I love you so much. Babe, no. Come on, please. I said no. Oh, my God. I mean, all these girls I'm blowing off just to be with you. It's like you didn't want to give in even a little bit. Come on. I said no. I give up. Okay. Hold on for a second. See, he's still a man at the end of the day. He's still a man, okay? He's like, listen, I got all these women that want me. Yeah, he's real fine. He is. And he's like, shoot, what's up? Why, you know, I, I'm practically your husband. No, you are not my husband yet, okay? And if a man tells me that, though, I blew off other women for you. I'm like, well, I blew off, I blew off other men for you, okay? I don't have, it's not like I'm lucky or I should be begging now because I blew off other men for you. Okay, but he's frustrated. He wants some. Amy, I can't believe you're acting like this. I'm sorry. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, whatever. I can't believe you're acting like this. Okay. much to say let's just see what is about to go down and he still resisted he said uh, my girl I got a girl all that crap he talked but he still said I got a girl I can't Gina, get off me. Oh, my God. I can explain myself man. So why is she like. on you half naked oh listen, my God. listen Nicole it's not what it looks like let me explain myself uh, -uh. why are you explaining yourself Gina, shut up why would you want something like that anyways listen. Eve look what you can have listen. not some black Okay, so she comes in and she said, what you think you're doing with her, some black girl, when you could have this? See, she thinks she's better. She thinks she's above the black woman. Why would you want her when you can have this? You do have women who feel like that. They feel like that. You know, she's she's the black girl. She's supposed to be on the lodum totem pole and stuff. You know, you could have me. I'm the better pick. Honey, no, baby. Okay? A lot of us black women... We are all beautiful women and your man, he likes what he likes. He's not into you, but she can't accept it. She can't accept the competition. She can't accept the rejection. And she's a uh, racist. She thinks she's better than black women, you know? 
Hey, come on, Nicole. Hey, wait a minute. Come here, Nicole. <laughs> this man what you talking about you not feeling it man my father's a pastor and i'm out in the streets hustling with your ass i can't be doing this no more man i ain't doing it let me tell you something i ain't got shit to do with that you need to finish what you done started man man what's up with the nicole girl man did you get that ass first of all we have keith sweat the legendary keith sweat okay and we see he's trying to pull away I said, we'll see what happens with him. He's the son of a pastor. He says, how, how does this look? I am the son of a pastor and I'm out here dealing drugs with you, you know, but he's trying to pull him in, finish what you started. I'm not going to let you go. You are part of the life now. This is how they do, you know, like the Godfather said, when they pull me, when I think I'm getting out, they pull me back in. Okay. And there go him and his ignorant friends again. Okay, who think less probably of some black girls. That one. What's up with the Nicole girl, man? Did you get that ass yet? Come on, man. I told you she ain't that type of girl, man. What's wrong with you? What are you talking about, bro? They're all that type of girls, man. Well, not this one, man. She's a virgin. And I told you. I think I'm falling for her. Let's check out boy Avery's whip. <laughs> oh, come oh. on, that, man. Anyway, man. Now, Sheena. Now, that girl's hot, dog. Funny you brought that. It, first of all, isn't this interesting? You have the the black guy who's the son of the pastor right there with his sister's boyfriend who's arab chaldean he doesn't like he says the arabs and he doesn't know right there is your sister's boyfriend and then we have his ignorant behind they're all that type of girl the black girls you know what you mean you didn't hit it yet you see this is how some people think you know they think the value of the black woman could be lower or we're this and we're that. I bet you he ain't never even dated a black girl. He doesn't know nothing, but he's going off the stereotypes and what he probably sees in the community with the out of wedlock kids and everything like that. But he's just ignorant. And ironically, he loves to dress in hip hop black culture. But I can't stand, I can't stand that. I hate when, um, like I said, I don't like, um, I don't like wigger types at large i mean some of them will marry you but when they adopt the black man's style and culture the toxic parts i can't deal with it but i hate it when you listen to black music you like black food okay you do you like a lot of things that's a black culture but you don't respect uh the women and all of that but yet you're emulating and embracing you know black american culture it's ridiculous you know I'm personally, I get shocked a lot when I see guys who are heavily into hip hop and they don't have a black wife or a black girlfriend. I'm like, you're doing all this, but you, you didn't go all the way and get you a black girl. But then again, the black men in hip hop don't even, they discriminate against black women. So I guess they're following in their footsteps. They can, they can have and embrace parts of the culture, but they won't go all the way uh, when it comes to the women and stuff. And then again, you'll have the black men like the brother here who is racist and doesn't want to see the black girl with the Arab guy. Get up, man. Seen a popped up at my house last night. Oh. oh you know what they did? <laughs> yeah, but Nicole caught us together and it wasn't even like that, man. Yeah, right, man. Whatever, dog. I told you I'm falling for Nicole, man. Falling? Falling for something like that, man? Like what? What do you mean like that? Uh-huh. It came out. What you mean you falling for something like that? We're not even women to him. We're that. We're something. Not human. How could you be falling in love with a black girl? What you mean? You supposed to hit it and quit it. You don't fall in love. He told her, I love her. She's a virgin also. So stop making it sound like she's a, a whore or something like that. She's a respectable black girl who I'm in love with. And she is a virgin. And, you know, he's like, what do you mean something like that? You see, you got to wake up to your friends, point blank, period. People of all races, you know, your friends could be very racist who you hang around. And you might not even know that until the situation comes up where you fall in love with somebody who's different of a different race and culture. Then you really get to see the people that you are around and who you're surrounded by. 
disgusting. And he doesn't even know that he's talking about his sister, the guy in the yellow, that guy just insulted and is talking about a sister, but they don't, they don't know. Man, this guy's stupid. Relax, man. What does it matter what anybody else thinks? Listen, you like this girl, right? Yeah. That's all that matters. Don't let them bother you. Man, Just don't know. let them bother you. Thanks. Come on. Yo, dog. <laughs> I'm feeling that. It's a beautiful thing to know that there's some good women out there. That just ain't willing to drop their drawers and take a brother in the back room. Yeah, but sometimes you want a freak. Nah, nah, I'm agreeing with my man right there. I want someone wholesome, holy and shit. Like my man, sister, right? Yeah. No, no, you tripping now, man. man. You saw Scarface. The sister's always off limits. No, I can relate to that, man, definitely, because my sister's always off limits. And he doesn't know that is his sister's man right there. And Keith Sweat talking about, I want somebody wholesome. He's a drug dealer with multiple women. And it's good he has a friend. His other friend said, don't worry about what they think. He's, he's not racist like the other one. So it's good he has someone like that in his life. They're talking about the sisters are off limits. Yeah, and your sister is, that's her man right there. I didn't know he was dating my sister. I should be kicking his ass. You know, what's your name, man? Hey, you? Mark. All right, Mark. Nice to meet you. What's up, kid? All right, man. All right, man. Yeah, have a good one, man. Wow, you live here. What? You think Arabs are the only people with money this town? You know what? You need to chill, because I told you I am not an Arab. I mean, damn, I'm Chaldean. How many times do I have to tell you? How would you like me calling you Jamaican? I don't care what you call me, girl. Just as long as you don't call me broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's the difference? The difference is we're Chaldeans. We're Catholics from Iraq. Okay, all right. I think Iraq used to be called Babylonia, but is that true? Really? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's check it out. Wow. That is a humongous mansion. <laughs> So, how have you been? I've been good. Yeah? We've been missing each other lately. What? You got a new boyfriend or something? Ooh, Nicole. You do. I can see it all over your face. Well, he must be something special. What, with all the young men your father and I have introduced you to? We were starting to worry about you, girl. So, what's his name? Aby. Aby. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little different. Where's he from? Dearborn. Wait a minute. What's his last name? Mohammed. Oh, Lord, no. Don't tell me that it's one of those Arab boys. Yeah, and I love him. Honey, don't you know all those men want to do is wine you and dine you and then sleep with you? Oh, mother, I can't... And so do the black men. <laughs> okay, so do black men. And of course, the stereotypes again. They always want to make black women think no one truly wants to know you, wants to date you, marry you. It's always, it's ridiculous. Okay. I believe you just said that. Well, God forgive me, I'm sorry. I don't wanna do anything we're gonna regret. Believe me, we're not gonna regret anything. Trust me. Brian, how much do you really like me? Let's go to my room, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Brian, seriously. Do you really like me? I think I'm falling in love with you. I know I'm falling in love with you. That's what uh, the Chaldean guy said to the to the black woman. He said, I love you. You know I'm going to be your husband when they want some. What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Get over here. Come over here now. I 
I thought you went to a church revival. I bet you did. I was just giving I, up. Look, don't tell me. I know. You were just showing her the room, right? You didn't know. Busted. You can't judge a race or a person off of one incident and think that that represents the whole entire nation of people. That was the case. Every white woman in America who gets raped or robbed should automatically blame it on a black man. Child, they do. Mom, I really need you to be with me on this one. Well, is he Islamic or Christian? Okay, see, that's the thing. He's Muslim. Oh, Lord, no. Those people don't even believe that Jesus is the son of God. Well, all of daddy's business partners are Jewish and they don't either. You and daddy go out to dinner with them all the time and treat them just like family. <sighs> yes, that's true. But you know what, baby? What? I don't want any of my children to marry any of them. It's not about the religion. It's about the person's works. Mom, you taught me that. Look, I just want you to be happy for me. I'm not mad at me. Oh, your father, he's going to be very upset about all of this. I know, but... Okay, so, I mean, it is a lot of hypocrisy. You know, pretending you accept people, hanging with them. But she's like, I don't want my daughter with them, though, because, oh, they don't believe, you know, the Jesus. I know a lot of people who are Muslim, they do believe in Jesus. But she said, oh, the son of God issue. Also, um, even though he's Muslim, they're Chaldean. I guess they have the Muslim culture, but they said that they're Catholic Christians. Okay, because when she asked, well, is he Christian? I mean, uh, isn't he? Because they said Chaldeans came and they are Christians. And then the girl just said we're Catholic. So. You help me talk to him. from head to toe, what they call it, a burqa. No, Ma, it's Hashad. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> and I want you also to meet Lisa's friend with those two half Arab children. Uh, come back and tell me how you feel about it. <sighs> Baby, don't you see, I just don't want you to do anything that you're gonna regret, and it's gonna make you fall out of grace with your father or with God. Oh. Okay. And it's true, like I said, you do want to research any man you're dating, his culture. I don't care where he's from. Research, you know, how do, what's the laws in the country regarding the women? Even if he didn't grow up there, it's still a part of their, some of their mindsets, the culture. Find out his culture, ask him about how he feels. Don't just read it and then assume stuff, ask the man you know, his views and stuff. Um, will, does he want you to wear the covering? Or he doesn't, some of them, you don't have to. Just find out what you can. So it's good to see the mother is, she's telling her right, find out things before you get heavily involved, you know, and that's real. You know, you have to decide what you're willing and willing to uh, do or convert to, so. What's the difference? young lady upstairs to your room but i was just trying to please 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 don't tell me that you were giving a tour of the house
Hey, Daddy. Good. Don't I know you? You're in my sociology class, right? It's Crystal. Nicole, right? Yeah. Girl, what you doing here? Mm -hmm. Uh-uh, not, not you two. Baby, baby, excuse me. We were trying to have a uh, serious conversation here. Okay. All right, I'm sorry, Dad. Okay, come on. Well, let me get out to the way. Yes. See, it's not, it's happening, not just with her as the black girl with the Chaldean, the Chaldean girls with the black men. A lot of this stuff does happen, but sometimes it's kept quiet. It's probably, you see it more openly now, but just a few years ago and stuff, you know, people kept it on the low when they were dating each other and stuff like that. So... And I'm sure, again, those of you who are in Dearborn, that this is probably really common, even if you don't always see it all over the place. What is your name? Crystal. Crystal what? They don't. They don't? Any relation to Sunny? Yeah. Shut the front door. Remember, that's the dude that my father had a beef with about some supermarkets. Somebody hit the lights so we can rock a day and night. Somebody hit the lights so we can rock a day and night. Somebody hit the lights so we can rock a day and night. Hey, Cousin Lisa. Hey, how my girls doing? Fine. <laughs> Everybody, this is my friend Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, girls. And what's your name? Ikea. Oh, that's so cute. You girls are so cute. Thank you. And girl. No, I was like, oh, yeah, company. No, no you don't. Woo! Girl. I know. Okay, so this must be the woman and those kids uh, that had a baby by Arab guy, an uh, Arab man. Those little girls. And that's the, uh, the woman who had the kids by the Arab man. Oh, you yeah, have company. She's dating this Arab guy, and I wanted her to talk to you before she gets in too deep. Girl, you might as well have a seat because we're going to be here for a long time. I told okay. you. Right over yeah. here. Yvonne, Shirley, come here. So cute. These my girls, Yvonne and Shirley. <laughs> Yvonne, go get the picture of your father. You see all the stuff I got in here? Yeah, it's nice. It ain't thanks to his camel jockey sand nigga ass, always late on his child support payments, and he has yet to come see his kid. Hmm. If you're my sister, that will make your father the Reverend Walters. Yeah, that's right. Girl, y'all got money. I mean, what you need a camel jockey to come save you for? Shoot, they ain't worth nothing anyway. Mm -hmm. Working at the gas station, uh, blowing up buildings. Uh, wow. <laughs> so ignorant so damn ignorant okay so she's like well you your family you come from money so why you want him because i like him i love him okay and how is she, how is she talking all this smack and you got two two or more kids by an arab guy and you talking junk because he did you dirty so just because he did you dirty that means he's gonna do me dirty because that happened to you. Clearly, the first time he did her dirty wasn't enough because she went back and had more kids with him. But you can hear in her voice, she is very upset and bitter about it. This is real. You will you will have black girls who are ignorant, who don't want you with the Chaldean Ar Arab guy. Even if he isn't Chaldean, just Arab and saying stuff, ignorant stuff, because you have haters, you have people who try to stop you from it or they make assumptions and stuff like that. 
Money. I mean, what you need a camel jockey to come save you for? Shoot, it ain't worth nothing anyway. Mm -hmm. Working at the gas station, uh, blowing up buildings. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's probably just trying to get his papers or something. What do he need you for? First of all, he was born here. He don't need no papers. And I love him. You know what? I thank you for being so concerned, Paul. Okay, <laughs> I'm happy she defended her man because she said, what he needs you for. So she's dissing her like, why would he want you? And that's supposed to be your black sister. And she's upset like, why would he, the Chaldean Arab, would he want you for? If y'all already got money, why he, see, she's mad because how her, her man did her. And she don't want her to have her love story. She thinks, yeah, you're going to end up just like me. A baby mama, okay, and try, you know, getting him on child support. That's what they all do, girl. You ain't going to get your love story. Okay, yes, they hate too, some of them. Say something was wrong? Well, first of all, it's 10 at night and you eat cereal. And? Well, second of all, mom and daddy home. Usually when they're not home, you're always trying to hang out with that Mexican chick, Marcia. You know, I don't like you hanging out with her anyway, man. She's too loose for you. First of all, you weren't saying that about her last year when you and your friends were trying to screw her. Come on, whatever, man. You know she was trying to get with us. It's so hypocritical. My life was really starting to spin out of control. I was dating about five women, and I was trying to juggle all of them. You? Okay, that's Cat Graham. Cat Graham, all right. I know a lot of you know who she is. Is your college boy, Mr. Screws Anything, pulling up behind us with all his skanks? Why don't you start, Shan? You know I had a shitty day today. I don't need you to start with me, huh? It's chill. like that i can assume that's his main girl girlfriend and he is leaving in front of her with other women and if you notice uh the mexican girl is a part of keith sweat's kind of harem and the parents did say they thought she was loose well she's one of many of the girls that he sleeps with with on rotation who all know about each other and you know he's a drug dealer slash type of pimp type of thing i don't know but um I can see the look in his eyes. He knows that's the good woman right there. He knows he's doing wrong, but he's still leaving without her. Let me show you how tall I am. I'm fucking thug and I'm crazy as fuck. I'm cousin. 
Crazy little boy. Wait a minute, man. Business can't be this damn bad. What other stack of money up on? Let me tell you, son. Case and his nigga for hire, they've been opening up weed houses all over the damn place. I mean, I told you, you didn't even believe me. Jade and them were the ones taking all our business. Yo, dog, you know what I heard? I heard they whipped Lamont ass for trying to steal rims in the hood the other day, man. Guess what? I'm the one that told Lamont to steal a damn rim, baby. Payback. <laughs> oh, I think of your girl. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. That was you. Boy, why haven't you been to church? You know better. You know better. Get out of that car and give me a hug. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. How you doing, Miss Vincent? I'm doing good. I want you to meet my niece all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hello. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So how the hell am I going to get away with doing any kind of dirt when my father's a prominent local pastor? You know, April joined our church last Sunday. Yes, I did. You know, your father really touched my heart. Mm. He has the anointing of God all over him. People have been getting healed from cancer, mm -hmm. brain tumors, and all kinds of allergies. Oh, yes, God has really been blessing us up in your father's Take church. Thank Jesus. One man was even healed of AIDS. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. So, I hope to see you in church on Sunday. <laughs> she is shooting her shot, okay? And, <laughs> I mean, this is how it is. A number of women I said in the church, they want a man, but... She she ain't completely innocent. You could totally pick up on that. But she's shooting her shot. Okay, hey, listen, nice meeting you, okay? He saved and single. I told you let me get out of here, man. Yo, I know you want to hit that. <laughs> I know you want to hit it. I know you want to hit it, boy. Man, that's a church girl, man. I'm not doing it. <laughs> what you talking about? Those are the best kind, boy. Come on, T. Let's get out of here for somebody else. See me. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. It's about time one of us stands up to our big badass brothers. Even if we look at a black guy, they threaten to kick our ass. So why don't you shut up, Natasha? You ain't nothing but a hoe anyway. And now you're trying to make Crystal one too. You know what? Get out right now. We need to talk. Yeah. Look, everybody need to chill out, all right? Oh my God. Is your problem, Gloria? You know my problem. You're taking an abed to your house in broad daylight in front of the entire neighborhood. First of all, I would check that that bitch. Don't call my man. I assume that's the N word. I would check her. You better watch your mouth. Because it's the same thing. If I'm dating an Arab man, whatever, whatever racial slur they have for Arabic men, and you're a black woman, don't you call my man that. I'm going to check you. Okay. You don't call my man nothing disrespectful. Everyone will be watching us. Aren't you afraid? Think of the way they'll start to treat us. No, I sat with his mom and dad yesterday in their house. No one cared what the neighbors thought. We're in America. Yeah, whatever. They love to get with us. Look how beautiful we are. And even said that they still had that slave mentality. <laughs> you should hear how stupid you sound. She actually isn't lying. We all know about it. Okay. Now, maybe he doesn't. I think he actually does care for her. But she's even aware. She says they still have the black men still have the slave mentality. And she says, look at how beautiful we are, honey. Um, you ain't the only beautiful one. And, um, you're not all that, baby. Okay. But she is, she, her head is above her ass. She thinks she's so above the black woman because... I can assume in that area where she's at, the black guys are trying to get with them. I don't even think they probably try to holler at her that much, but she believes the black man, you know, he, he uplifts us, you know, look at us. We know we are Chaldean Arab girls, you know, this is what it is. I told you in the beginning, this girl was ignorant and a problem, but you know, look, it's all coming out with her. Can you just get in the car so we can go, please? No. That's all right. I'm not going with you. I'll call my brother to pick me up. Are you serious? Yes. <sighs> this is real life. Even though I don't like her character, she's a racist, she's a hater towards black women. She's also aware of the slave mentality that a lot of black men do have. 
but she thinks she's so above the black woman. But in real life, I mean, she's, she doesn't want the possibility of repercussions being seen with her and the black guy. That's real life. I mean, that is real. You know, she knows her people around there. They wouldn't approve and their opinions and stuff. And she's afraid that her value is going to be taken down along with her. Hey, mom. Hi, honey. So how was school? Um, it's fine. Mom, I need to tell you something, but I don't think I know how. What is it? You promise you won't get mad and start yelling at me? I promise. Well, I I'm dating someone. Oh my God, Crystal, that's great. Who is he? Do we know him? Oh, uh, well, see, that's, that's where you might get upset. Don't tell me he's Muslim. No, he's, um... He's Jewish? No, he's, he's not Jewish. He's, he's black. What? An Abbot? Are you crazy? What, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Um, um, I love him. He treats me so well. He comes from a wonderful family. I mean, his uncle's a pastor. I beat all of those people are preachers, Crystal. He's black. I don't want a black man in this house. You will not bring a black man into this house. Mom, color shouldn't matter. It's happiness. That's what counts. He makes me happy. He has my heart. But you're breaking mine. People are going to talk. They're going to say, what kind of daughter have I raised? You want that reputation for yourself and for our family because of your stupidity? The only person that judges us is God. It doesn't matter what people think or say. I said no. You will not bring a black man into this family, so just forget about it. Mom, I met his family, and they accepted me. I mean, meet him. You might like him. You might, you might accept him. Let them find a nice black girl to take home. This is what happens, you know? There was a guy, when I was a teenager, he wasn't black. He, he, um, uh, he wasn't black. And his mother, she was a racist, you know. I had called, um, his house and she had never even met me, but she knew that he liked black girls. And she thought I had hung up the phone and she called me, uh, a black bitch. And she didn't know that I heard her, but I did. And I was a teenager, like a young girl. And that's how she was talking. These things happen. The look on the mother's face, she hears what she's saying. She knows she's wrong, but she doesn't want the humiliation and her daughter to be brung down socially by seeing a black guy. Then what's crazy is she said, is he Muslim? Like that wasn't good either because people think they're Arabic because they're from Iraq. And she's like, they don't No, We don't even want you dealing with a Muslim, but then they say they're Christian. So if that's the case, then what's the issue if her man is a Christian? See, that's the bull crap. That is the bull crap with a lot of people. They say they believe in God. They say we're still Christians. Yeah, but you still want to be racist because of someone being different. Don't get me wrong. We all know the stereotypes. Out of wedlock kids, black men not marrying and all this other stuff. They all know about it. Everyone knows. Okay. But I think even if he was the opposite of those stereotypes, she probably still would have an issue with it. So, but she really loves him. She's fighting for him, the relationship, you know, towards her friends and her family. So we'll see what happens with this. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? So what's going on, Brian? I came to talk to you. It's about this girl. That figures. <laughs> what's your name this time? Oh, no, man. It's different this time. I already like this girl a lot, and I think this is the one. Mishkara Allah, finally, you're settling down. So who's the lucky girl and tell me where she's from? Well, her name is Nicole. She's very beautiful and a great girl, just the type I was looking for. And see, she's black. Here we go. Is this a joke? 
I'll notice ain't no joke. Oh, why are you doing this to me, kid? Is she Muslim? Because you know they got black Muslims. No, she ain't Muslim. Matter of fact, she's Christian. And her dad's one of those prominent pastors from Detroit. Interesting what he just said, though. He said, well, you know they got black women Muslims. So he's not against that if the black girl is a Muslim. Hmm. What's the matter with you? She's black and she ain't Muslim? That's two strikes against her, Habiba. This will kill your mother and father. What's the matter with you? It doesn't matter that she... Um, but you just said, is she a black Muslim, though? Oh, but no, she's black, though. Man, please. What's the matter with you? She's black and she ain't Muslim? That's two strikes against her, Habiba. This will kill your mother and father. What's the matter with you? It doesn't matter that she's black. Oh. And it doesn't matter that she's Christian either. I mean, we all believe in God, don't we? Whether it's Allah, Jesus, Jehovah, or whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't always agree with everything you do. I will always stand by you, but Habiba, it does matter. I'm out of here. Please. No, it matters to you. It matters to you. Hi, may I help you? Yeah, I called earlier. Are you Nicole? Yes. Are you the one that called wanting to know more about Islam? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's nice to meet you. My name's Elena. You can follow me. Okay. So, I bet you want to know why I called you in here. Well, I'm hoping that I got that scholarship. No. I saw you the other day, Amina. Okay. In Greek town, smoking, drinking, with some white boys. You have intoxicated or falling down. Please don't tell my family. What you're doing is embarrassing your family and our religion. Not to mention making yourself look cheap. Allowing some white man violate what Allah has deemed sacred. You know, Fatima, this is America, and I should be able to date anybody that I want to. Do you remember what happened to that young girl, Diana, a few years ago? Her father killed her in her sleep, and her brother went and turned himself in as the killer. All because she got pregnant by some white boy from Livonia. That whole family is ruined. The family is ruined. Honey, the father killed the daughter. Don't, shouldn't you be saying that it was horrible that that girl's father killed his own child because she was dating a white boy? Oh, the whole family's ruined now. Yeah, it's ruined because the, a father killed his daughter. This upsets me because I hear about honor killings in different countries of the devil, of demonic. You believe in God, Allah, God, Jehovah, all of that. But oh, you like someone different time to kill you. I'm going into heaven. You ain't going into heaven nowhere. You are a murderer. You killed your child just because they loved someone else. And it sounds like this woman she doesn't seem to see that it's evil for a father to kill her daughter. Instead, oh, it wouldn't have happened if she wouldn't have talked to the white boy. Well, I think that they should do away with all these traditions anyways. Do you know why we wear this type of clothing? Yes, Fatima, I know. Yeah? Do you know why we don't wear that type of clothing? Yes. Tell me why. Because it shows respect to our religion into our bodies, knowing that the only person worthy of seeing our bodies is our husband. Mm -hmm. And why aren't you following that? Because it's not what I want, Fatima. It's what my parents want. And this is America, not the Middle East. I'm sorry to interrupt. I have an issue that I need your help with. What is it? I have an American girl that's considering converting to Islam, and she's overwhelming me with questions. I'll be with you in a sec. You see, people are flocking to us. Did you know Islam was the fastest growing religion of the world? Actually, my friend Steve told me since 9-11, Christianity was. Well, I mean, well, Christianity and Islam are the two most major religions in the world. Christianity and Islam are the top two religions in the world and it is true there are a growing number of people who are converting to being uh islamic every year but she said actually after 9 11 more people were turning christian but 
that's the girl who's AB's sister. She she wants to be free. She wants to be able to uh, dress how she wants, live her life like she wants. But um, we shall see if that happens. <laughs> He's giving you your own Quran to keep translated both English and Arabic. Keep it safe with you. Yeah, from Ziba, anything you would like to know. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Shukran. Her father killed her in her sleep, and her brother went and turned himself in as the killer. All because she got pregnant by some white boy from Livonia. The whole family is ruined. she's gonna succumb to the pressure and follow the culture and religion even though she wants to be free she's scared her father will kill her believe me if your father was to kill you god is going to take care of him because a man who kills his children i don't care what faith or religion he is you are going to be dealt with you are of the devil you are a demon and you killed your child just because you don't like how they want to live their life I mean, you can't control adult people when they are adults. But if you feel, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to do an honor killer now. Okay, go ahead. But you ain't getting into heaven. I hope you know that. You're not. It doesn't matter who you are on this planet. You can't go around. People do it. You killed your child. Thank God this was just a dream. Nina, it's a nightmare. It's all a nightmare. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, it's only a nightmare. You'll be all right. Hello. Hi. Would you like to try some of Julia Scott's makeup today? I hope it's expensive. Sort of, kind of. Good. Look, I have the perfect turquoise makeup just for you. Okay. How about doing a makeover today? Okay. Hi, Nani. Hi, sweetie. You're here so soon. Baby girl, your mommy's working right now. Let's go, okay? It's okay, honey. I'll be there in the All morning. Right, baby. We'll be right over here, okay? Cute. I am so sorry. No problem. That's my husband. Will you please forgive me? Okay. See? Now that's what I want. Hmm? You know what I'm talking about. I want you to be my wife. Hmm? You think about that one while you're getting your makeover. I'm gonna go get you something. I'll be right back. See, this is the problem with people. Mind your business. I don't care if you know my brother or not. This is my life. Mind your business about who I am dating and worry about your business, Mr. Pimp. He got like 10 other women. Oh, she's with the Arab, Arab Chaldean. Ugh. Mind your business. Especially that one in the white hat jumping in like he's some security guard. Yeah. What is 
just letting you know I can reach out and touch a little boy on you anytime I want. What do you mean? Who are you? There's a big going down. He is the slave to the Chaldean Arab store owners. Look at him come in to do work for them against the black man preacher. And tomorrow too. Over a supermarket. Make sure you lose. I'll be back. <laughs> you know who I am? <laughs> Where's your God when you need him? You don't know who I am. I ask for the higher authority. Be seeing you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me ask you a question. I mean, that shit you tell me about in the car about my sister. Man, will you bullshit me or what? Man, do I look like a comedian to your ass or something? I said I walked up in the Julian Scott the department store. She was with this Arab dude. There was an exchange of words. One thing led to another. He called his boys. It was fortunately that one of mine was there. Man, I don't think you know as much about your sister as you think you know. You saying the coldest date is some Arab guy. Man, I don't know. She probably tricking him. Man, you know what? Thinking about this shit is just pissing me off again. Man, I'm going to get an edge. Man, maybe it wasn't the cold with somebody else, man. I know it was my sister. Man, you naive or you crazy or out of your mind. Man, bring your ass on in. Man, it ain't my sister. I'm telling you, you tripping. The rabbit drops the ball. Uh-huh. <laughs> the ball rolls in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> now, those Some people pimps? say, look, you want to play golf or you want to mess around? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What's he doing in there? Pop, what you doing here? The question is, what are you doing here? And with him. You know, last night some gorilla looking goon came to my house looking for you? Yeah, but I didn't have Sit that. Sit down and shut up. You see what you've done to my son? You corrupted him. No, you corrupted me. I made him evil just like you. Hey, 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 let me go, man. Hey, hey, let me go. Hey, man, that's no problem. You all can't solve with a little communication. Why don't you try a little bit of that? Man, he think he's God, man. He's not God and you are not either. Just a little two-way communication for crying out loud. You know, there should be no reward for the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. He is yeah, like is the devil. Talking you, man? I'm talking to you. Hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Pastor, if that's what you call yourself, if you got something you want to say to me, go ahead and say it. Stay away from my son. Man, what you doing here, man? What you mean what I'm doing here? You know this case joint, man? man? I don't care who joint this is, man. I'm going to the ATM machine, man. All the ATMs on 7 Mile, you gonna stop at Jade and Case Bank? I don't care about that nigga. I got my joint on me, man. Man, you gonna get us killed, man. Come on. Oh, Lord. You know, deep down inside, I really love my father. I don't know why in the hell I keep rebelling against him. I keep doing dumb shit that might tarnish our family's name. Man, what the hell are you doing in my store, man? What you think? What does it say? ATM machine. I'm getting some money. Now shut your mouth, man. I don't like your attitude. Watch your mouth, fool. Oh, you big ass up. Back up. Hey, back up. Yeah, you yeah. lucky I'm naked, fool. Yo, boy, get your off with me, boy. You better get dressed next time, man. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. Let's get out of here. Won't be naked next time. People killing each other over the dumbest things. There's a group of Chaldeans right there, rushing up to fight some Arabs. What's your sister last night? What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Hey, 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 Y'all can't do this. Y'all can't be fighting outside my foot. Hey, didn't y'all hear what the man said? You Chaldean Arabs do this every damn week. You see, black folks ain't the only ones that got problems with one another. What's all that about, man? What are you guys fighting about? Okay, so the Arabs and the Chaldeans were both fighting each other. 
See? Because people are like, well, aren't they both Arab? No. But you would think that. And they have beef, too. Oh, hey, don't worry. We took care of that. No, just forget about it, all right, man? It's me. Yeah, it's Gloria. How you doing? All right. Look, listen. Uh, I didn't want to have to be the one to tell you this, but Crystal's uh, going to a hotel tonight with some guy named Brian. Look, there she go again. In her business that races her racist friend. Look at this. She's telling on her that she's with the black guy and that they're going to the hotel. And she believes that she could be killed. Now you're risking your friend being killed. Your, your, your so-called friend. Yeah, he's an abbot. The devil stay working, you know that? Straight up. But you got not to dodge all that bullshit, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't believe you took me to your house yesterday. I mean, your mother was tripping. Anything could have happened to me. I know. I'm sorry. I want to make it up to you. I want to make it up to you. What do you mean by that? Uh-huh. I'll be back. a very big deal i mean she's probably a virgin okay and we know in different cultures that's like a very big thing for the women to be you know so she's she's risking a lot right she wants it is you want to get with my sister i'll kill you <laughs> and stuff you know what i'm proud of you you know and i'm not looking for anybody's approval only allah and it wasn't that i was trying to be rebellious i was just spiritually lost and confused we know she lying you can tell she lying to herself but she's just she doesn't want to end up dead so she's giving in And I feel whole now. I feel closer to our God. And I don't expect you to understand that. Wow, I mean, are you listening to yourself? I mean, does, does this have anything to do with that nightmare you had the other night? Oh, man, I'm just impressed. 
And I'm impressed on how you're handling this whole issue on dating that black girl. What's her name? Nicole? Yeah. Do you love her? Yeah, I do love her. Okay, so she doesn't seem like she's not supportive of it. She seems supportive of him dating a black girl, his sister. What since I hear you dating some cow here, huh? Some Arab guy, huh? I love him. And Brian got beat down by one, but you dating one? I'm so sorry to happen to Brian, but he had nothing to do with it. Mark, this don't have nothing to do with you, okay? You nasty girl. How dare you call me nasty? I'm in love. But what would you know about that? You're just a wannabe thug. Boy, you are a church boy. You just a church boy. Tell me you can turn your darkness into light. Here we go again. What's up, man? I got it, man. All right. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You ready to do this, man? Man, after they beat down Brian, I'm ready, man. can see things didn't go like he expected keith sweat his character the the drug dealer has been shot you want to play the thug you want to be violent these are the consequences of what happens with that we can see maybe the streets didn't get him you know he wanted to be a thug and, and rebel and live that life and hang around the wrong type of man now he's dead and this probably has woken him up I mean he could have lost his life and now he's come back to his father you know and his father saw this coming you know hanging out with drug dealers and gang members two years later let's see what's going on the Bible says that those whom God have joined together, let no man put asunder. I no longer see you two as separate individuals of different cultures, different religions, or even different colors. I see you as one. So love one another. Regardless of what others may say, do, think, or even desire. God bless this marriage. Allah Malcolm. They got 
got married. Look, they got married. Even the guy that seemed racist who said, can't you get a black Muslim girl or something? Are you going to hurt your family? He's at the wedding. Her brother of the streets looks to have turned into some type of pastor, upstanding type of guy. And he's even blessing the union now. And A.B., he said, I'm going to make you my wife. And now, look, she's his wife. To wrap you in my warm embrace Visions of your lovely face You know, my mom and dad decided not to make it because of the Christian Muslim thing. But regardless of all that stuff, I made it. So as we can see, her brother, his heart got changed and he stopped being racist towards you know, Chaldean Arabs, you know, he accepted and changed and knew it's just love at the end of the day. And his heart was changed. I'm happy they got married. He kept his word. Nicole was the one and he married Nicole. woke up one day and realized what God's calling was for me. And you know what that was? Just love. That's all. <laughs> Just love. In spite of everything. Just love. What do you mean the God is so? Then why do you have it in the show room? Excuse me, sir. I'm doing everything that I possibly can to locate another vehicle for you. I have a salesman on top of it as we speak. In the meantime, I'm going to have to ask you to calm down. Are you the sales manager? I need to speak to the owner. Okay, sir. I will be back shortly, okay? okay. The owner should be out to assist you any moment now. You can have a seat for the time being. That's fine. Okay. Hello, sir. Hi. How you doing? Brian Casey. Uh, are you the owner? Yes. <laughs> really? You kind of like... Uh, what? Black? No, young, well, black too. Uh, thank you for the compliment. Uh okay, so look at him. He's cleaned up himself. He doesn't seem to be into maybe the thug type of stuff. He's become successful. And that's the girl uh, that he was dating. That's her father, I believe, right there. So let's see what happens. I mean, he got beat up by the brother. And I guess their relationship had ended. Is there anything I can help you with? Yeah, you see the car right over there? That's the one that my daughter wants. She doesn't want to order for one for later. Okay, uh, Jeff, can you escort this gentleman to my office? Absolutely. Thank you. Follow me, sir. Excuse me. Oh my God, Brian. Kristen? Wow, it's been like three years. So more like four. Where have you been? I called. I looked everywhere for you. My family sent me to San Diego. They threatened to hurt you if I try to contact you. They did hurt me. I hope they get together. I hope that they get married. They love each other. They really do. And I mean, I don't know. I guess that was her. Yeah, I think that was her father that he that he spoke to just earlier. But 
they really love each other. And if they have to, to, to leave and move away just so they could be together and live their happy life, then they should do it. If the family uh, want to be racist and stuff, just, you know, sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to get rid of people in your life that's racist, no matter if you grew up with them or not, because nobody has the right to stand in the way of people's happiness and who they get married to for the rest of their life. No one has a right to choose that for you or tell you who to love. I really believe that. Okay, so that's it for the movie Forbidden Fruits. I love this film so much. I hope that you loved it. It is a hidden gem and it's, it's real life. We saw real life things, you know, sometimes family and friends that they want to warn you or they feel scared for you to date outside the culture and group because of what your peers or what society is going to think. You have the beef between the two cultures, the clashing, the stereotypes, you know, oh, you date my women, but I can't date yours. Or, oh, you date the black women, but oh, you're throwing a fit if I like the black man. Um, being a virgin and wanting to get married, being in the church and wanting to be free, being of the Islamic faith, but you want to sort of be a little bit more free. It was a lot of things that they had in common, despite being of different faiths and uh, different ethnicities and stuff. But this is such a great film. I love it so much again, and I hope that you liked it. And Terrell Hicks. Love Terrell Hicks. She is. She had a singing career. She released an album. She was in several films. Of course, we remember her from A Bronx Tale. We remember her from Belly with DMX. But I love this film a lot. And I love it that she really put herself out there as a black girl during the, the, the 90s, you know, where you didn't see movies showing black girls with Italian guys, with Arab guys. And Terrell Hicks, you know, she didn't mind doing this in her career, representing for black women early, showing promotion of the swirl and um she's still alive still beautiful still doing her thing and we love you terrell hicks love 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 this film so thank you all for joining me i can't wait to hear your opinions about this film anybody who lives in detroit uh dearborn uh some of you who follow me do did what do you think of the film have you experienced anything like this do you know any Chaldean and black couples in Detroit or Arab and black couples in Detroit. Let me know. Bye y'all. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.